strategy committee meeting. It's just to know that that other citizen one is for consideration as well under 7.1 that's already there. We're live. We are live. Thank you. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the first meeting of 2023 of the Mahone Bay Town Council. We're all in our places with bright, shiny faces. And welcome to the folks at home who are joining us on YouTube. When the meeting has concluded, before we go into our in-camera session, there will be an opportunity for those of you who are watching at home to ask a question of council of any issue that is discussed uh, tonight. So with that, we will call the meeting to order and we will begin by acknowledging that we are gathered tonight in Mi'kma'ki, the ancestral present and future territory of the Mi'kmaq people. Today we gather with the intent followed by the living peace and friendship treaties and we do so with respect, cooperation and coexistence. Council, you have an agenda that was uh, emailed to you. And before we get to a motion to accept the agenda, I would note a couple of changes. Uh, there is one additional appointment on Article 7.1. Uh, mine are the committee appointments for council members, but there's one citizen who wish to be appointed to a committee. And there's also a change at 8.4, which provides us with the minutes of the policy and strategy committee that was held on November 28th. So any motion on the agenda would include those amendments. Do we approve the uh, agenda as amended? Thank you. I'll second. Seconded. Uh, and <laughs> Councillor Alonis Croft, you've heard the motion. On the question, all in favor? The motion is carried, thank you. Let's go to the minutes of the meeting of 1 December. No, December I'm sorry, 13th. December 13th, 2022. It was a regular meeting and I've got a note that says request to amend. That was for the agenda, my apologies. Okay, all right, thank you. I move that the minutes of the December 13th, 2022 meeting be accepted as circulated. Thank you. Seconded by Councillor Wilson. You've heard the motion. On the question, all in favor? The motion is carried. Thank you. We do not have any presentations tonight. We do have four pieces of correspondence under action items. <clears throat> Councillor Feeney. Mayor, um, the first item from the Founder Society, I just think we should update the um, committee schedule to reflect the Founders Society's appointment of Annette St. Ange and Brian Pulferman as their representatives on the HAC. Okay. Uh, Your Worship, we are certainly able to do that at the staff level. We'll just update our yeah. records. So thank you. We can easily make that change. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. 4.2, the anti-racism task force. Just second for that motion. Oh, we're going, I thought we were just oh. on the oh, uh, we were just I think we're just going to hand it to staff. Yeah. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, the anti-racism task force, the request for support. If, if I could be uh, some leeway on this one, we did discuss this very informally at the last mayor deputy CAO meeting that we had. And at that time, that was the second opportunity we had had to discuss it with the contractor that, that is being used to develop this. At the first meeting, it was made clear that the people around that table agreed in principle with what was presented, but that it had to be taken to councils for their concurrence before it would go any further. The next thing we knew, we had a letter on the table inviting all the councils to come to a meeting about the anti-racism committee. No terms of reference had ever been provided. And the mayor in Bridgewater 
and also uh, in, in Lunenburg led the charge in reiterating, and all the mayors agreed that um, this needed to go to council for council and staff to have a look at the content of the terms of reference. And that had not been forthcoming. And I think you had a, the CAOs had a- Yes, we've had, uh, I attended the meeting, which is referred to in this letter that's on the correspondence. Um, since then, CAOs have had a meeting and really we're at the point where the intention is to bring something back to the mayors, wardens and deputies and CAOs meeting, I believe it's January 18th, I think, it's somewhere in there, um, in that body's role as a, um, a way to bring together people from each municipality. Um, so the intent is to have something to come back to that group um, and then um, from there build something that would come to each council. Yes. Um, if I may, Your Worship, the letter in front of us, I've read it many, many times, <laughs> many yeah. times since it's come through, and I, I find that I find more layers to it every time I read it. Um, you know, my initial reaction was that we need to have something that we hire someone to do. The request for councils to um, not delay to hire a coordinator, you can't hire a person unless you know what that job is. Um, but I think, um, again, just once just today, having read it again, um, I think really what um, I think what councils can do, if I may, would be to keep an open mind of how important this this idea is, this effort is on a regional basis. And we do expect something to come forward soon. And um, then at that point for elected officials to look at that and say, how does this fit in my community? How can I best represent my community with the idea of coming up with something that is robust and will be successful and that we can get some teeth. So again, I have read this letter so many times, um, but I think at this point, my recommendation to council will be to um, stay tuned for what's coming forward because we do expect something to come back soon. Fair enough. I mean, hearing hearing that um, the, it strikes me as a good recommendation. I'd move that we defer um, this uh, correspondence to a, a, a future meeting after the mayor's warden's um, discussion, um, mm -hmm. and we'll pick it up at that time. Second, Mr. Carver. Seconds the motion. On the question, can I just ask you a question? Yes, please. I have read this a couple of times. When they say people at the table, who do they mean? Well, that's one of the issues. Um, some of the municipalities in the region have their own, um, uh, yeah, equity, uh, equity, diverse. I am losing all words. Anyway, they have committees that are set up to look at uh, equity and uh, inclusion. inclusion in the community. And I'm forgetting the community. Um, diversity. Um, so some of the regional municipalities have those committees. So in those cases, representative, representatives from those committees attended. In other cases, there were municipal staff attending. So really what it came down to was that, um, as the mayor said, there had been a, a very draft uh, terms of reference presented to mayors, wardens, deputies, CAOs, just as a first blush. It then went to CAOs for some feedback, but that it was that very rough first draft that went to that meeting. So a lot of people had comments and some people were saying, I thought this had already been addressed and that sort of thing. So um, it was sort of a mixed bag of community representatives, representative needs the staff. Thank you. You're welcome. I think it was made clear from the very first time we sat with the consultants that it needs to go to council. You know, the mayors are not empowered to say, yeah, that's great, let's go with that one. Right? It has to come back to council. <laughs> there's, there's funding issues, there's structural issues, there's relationship issues, and they all need to be considered by council. And I suspect that'll be the response at the mayor's deputy CAOs on the 18th. <laughs> Councilor Kerber. A, a, a couple of things. Um, the, the deputy CAO referred a minute ago to the uh, equity, diversity, and inclusion initiatives. And mm -hmm. it certainly has 
um, I, I've heard that it's important also to make a distinction between anti-racism and the equity, diversity, and inclusion mm -hmm. initiatives so that the, there's a different focus. And I'm also thinking that because the process that was apparently favored by the consultant, by the contractor, was um, a, a certain inclusive circular style, it will bump up against the uh, rather formal structures that we operate under, that councils operate under. So I'm just saying that because it's going to be part of a dialectic, I think, as we continue um, trying to be a community-based or community-sensitive group when we are constrained by quite formal structures. Um, mm. This food for thought. Okay. Uh -huh. On the motion. All in favor? <clears throat> Motion's carried. Thank you. Well, let's go to um, David Puxley. <clears throat> oh, let's go. Sorry. Councilor Green. Mayor, 4.3, Mr. Um, Puxley's note. Uh, you may recall in June of 2020, um, the town council provided a motion to, to allow um, the sign in question to be erected and placed where it was placed. Um, for a period of one year, mm -hmm. um, the uh, the general thinking has been over the uh, as we exceeded that timeline was in the context of the um, um, Porta Peak mass casualty um, inquiry that it would be best left to the end of the inquiry it as it relates to the timing of the removal of the sign. And as I understand, the inquiry has been concluded and the sign's been removed. And I think that. Uh, addresses Mr. Puxley's um, letter. Okay. Thank you. Sign's been removed. The sign is down. Yes. We, okay. yeah. Can I just ask one quick, well, two questions really. I, I think I understand why this November 28th letter wouldn't have arrived until this meeting on our agenda. Maybe I don't. No, it's my fault. Okay. Your fault? My fault. <laughs> Maybe like a mistake. Uh, but my real question is, uh, not after we've done chastising the acting CAO, is my my name is on the two list, and I know I didn't get this letter in my mail. Oh. Interesting. It's interesting. Um, it was obviously a very long time ago when I sent a response got, back to got, Mr. Puxley. A great memory. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> sure you do. Uh, but to get the record straight, uh, when I sent a response back to Mr. Puxley and said, I'd like to clarify, would you like this to go on the agenda? I sent it to council instead of mm -hmm. Mr. Puxley. So no. I followed up and he was very gracious it's about my mistake. <laughs> but I, 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 made the, I think that Mr. Puxley had originally sent it to individual council addresses. So it's possible that your name was missed on that original send. Okay. But it, it caught up with you when this deputy CAO <laughs> picked it up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But you, and you haven't seen it at all before the I've not started. seen it until oh. came here. But but if Maureen sent out something apologizing for sending it to the wrong place, I would have just hit the yeah. button. I think the letter, the the original correspondence to individual council members was predated the 28th of November mm -hmm. um, and had been dealt with by staff. Before that as well. So um, I think we're in good shape on this one. Okay. Nothing more to do. Let's go to Mr. Rogers talking about the hemlock killing bug. Anyone have a comment? Uh, Your Worship, from a staff perspective, I would suggest we might forward this to Talking Trees. Uh, we know that's a group that's very interested in the trees in the community, and really, this is about asking people to be aware of certain signs so that they can report any um, signs of these hemlock killing bugs. So that would be my recommendation and people could feel free to share it with other people they know that walk in the woods. Mm. <clears throat> what about public works? Yes. To, to, then they can talk with talking trees and put together I don't know, something for our, our website, uh, some photographs of what these little buggers look like. We can follow up on that and see um, 
the best way to get information out there so that when people who are out working in the woods or walking in the woods, they might see something, they know what to do and they know what to look for. We can certainly do that. I noticed that it was first discovered in Western Nova Scotia five years ago, and it's slowly moving eastward. I think it's one of those things that you just can't do anything about. It's going to happen. Anyway, maybe we can uh, give it to John's, to the public works people, and yeah. they can consult with our resident experts at the Talking Trees and yeah, get a message it. out to people. Okay. All right. Let's go to correspondence information items. There are three. Mary, I move that we receive and file the three correspondence information items. Thank you. Do we have a seconder? Second. Seconded by Councillor Wilson. On the question. All in favor? Motions carry. Uh, ta, 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 ta. Staff reports. The first one of 2023. Yes. Boy. Are there? So this one is uh, with the first of the month. We only report on the uh, direction to staff. Are there mm -hmm. any questions? Obviously, it's a it's a gap in the middle there with the holidays, but. If there are any questions, I'm happy to answer or find an answer for you. How many benches are we looking at positional? Or do we have a, a plan in mind of the number? I'm wondering, <laughs> with the most recent discussions today, do we have a, uh -oh. a better sense of numbers? No, no, not this time. <laughs> yeah, there are a lot of factors. It will be probably around 10 to 15. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Um, that's uh, hasn't been quite determined yet. One each. <laughs> Okay. Any other questions for acting CAO? Um, I'm, I do have a question about the um, the South Shore Regional Library Board. Um, were we writing a letter to see about their um, why they, they need a representative from council? Have has anyone spoken to the staff that comes here in Mahone Bay who could suggest a citizen who has a a strong interest in the library services? Uh, so the uh, motion approved in December was that um, staff write this letter to request what the role is for that okay. representative. And then with that, what is the, is there a preference for a counselor or a member of community? And then that that information will come back to the council table for the council to make a decision. So we have already started our second round of um, uh, committee recruitments. Just, you know, there are still positions available. We haven't included the library board in that because we're not sure we're waiting for this. I expect we'll hear back from them rather quickly. It's just, again, the holidays. So, um, uh, yeah, we have uh, that motion uh, came from a uh, We've had members of council on the as representatives before. We've had members of the community, of the community. so we'll just see what comes back from them, and then my understanding is that council will make a decision from there. Okay. Well, mm -hmm. I would suggest that um, should it go for someone in the public, um, we we have a someone can have a conversation with the staff that comes here. They know they really know their clients well, and they may know someone who has a particular interest. It would save us a lot of time and when I moved back to Nova Scotia Crystal remembered me from being a little girl and <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah. yes, yeah. very very well yeah. so <laughs> good anything else entertain a motion to receive for information receive for information staff report that's my motion <laughs> thank you councillor Carver seconded by councillor Feeney on the question, all in favor? Motions carried. All right, let's go to the municipal special election. Dying to know who won. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Councillor Lonis Croft, do you have any information on that? <laughs> I, do. I do, and I thought it was a well written report. <laughs> Very accurate. Okay. 
Thank you, Mayor. I move that we accept the staff report on the municipal, the, the municipal special election. Thank you. I'll second. Second. <laughs> Councilor Owens Croft will second that. All on the question. All in favor? Motion is carried. Uh, Let, sorry. Worship, if I may, there were a couple of recommendations in there as well. I don't know Ooh. whether staff had it or sorry, council had an opportunity to look at those, but um, we did determine during the election process that there were a few yeah. things that we'd um, we'd like to open up the alternative voting bylaw now that we've had two successful elections run with it and just how can we tighten it up? It was all brand new when we first did this in 2020. Mm -hmm. um, the other opportunity that comes up with having a new face around the council table is that this might be a good time to get back on that um, that cycle that we used to do with the Department of Municipal Affairs and have their staff come down to provide in-house training. Um, I spoke with our municipal advisor and um, as it says on the report, they they recommend really working with the council one-on-one -on -one to say where are the areas you'd like more training mm -hmm. about, whether that's individuals that have a strong interest or whether um, councils are seeing things in their own community that they'd like to dig into a little more. Um, so the rec they do have a recommendation with the starting with that first um, first one, which is governance in a municipal context. And that is because that helps draw out some of those other questions. So I'm not sure whether councils had an opportunity to consider those two, but those were the two uh, staff <clears throat> recommendations. If council is so interested, Mayor, I'm happy to move the first one along that uh, and move that council direct staff to review the town of Mahone Bay alternative voting bylaw and provide council with any suggested amendments to ensure clarity following the second election conducted using the alternative voting method. Thank you. Second. Seconded by Councillor Carver. On that question, all in favor? Thank you. And our second motion? I can take that one. Um, I move that council direct staff to coordinate with the town's municipal advisor to schedule a governance in a municipal context training session with Department of Municipal Affairs and Housing Staff. Okay, seconded by Councillor Feeney. On the question, all in favor? Motion's carried. Is anyone in Nova Scotia doing it and doing any work on the fact that only 45% of our eligible voters, as simple as the system made voting, only 45% voted. Is anybody looking at, is there anything we can do in advance that would encourage people to vote? Well, we do, trends, would, trends did suggest that we would not have the same turnout for a special election. That tends to be how it goes. Yeah. Um, and in reality, we do very well in the home bay. We have a couple of really good um, factors in our favor, such as our ability to reach the community as well as we do. Um, there are a lot of regulations around advertising and that sort of thing, but for you know, under 200 bucks, we can get a notice in everybody's mailbox. And as you saw, one of the attachments is that notice that we send out with the notice of poll, but it also has the step-by-step -step instructions mm -hmm. on how to vote. Um, so we do very well in the home bay. Um, but yes, there is definitely an issue um, everywhere on voter turnout. And I, I think there are a lot of organizations that are out there that try to do something to encourage greater voter turnout. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, I think all we can do from a staff perspective is stay in tune with what they are. Again, there are more of those when it comes to a regular election cycle. Um, in 2020, of course, all of the things were coming out with um, uh, the grassroots get people out in the, in the head in advance of that election yeah. to get people talking a little more about you know are you interested in joining council we have a it's actually a very short window legislatively that you have between when an election is called and when you have to have it um but with a regular election you know when it's coming up so you have a little more lead time but mm -hmm. yeah, i think it's a larger problem than the home bay yes i agree i'm just I'm making a note for myself to I'm wondering if NSFM can maybe do something around uh, a, a focused marketing program about getting people out to vote for the 
what 2024 was the next <clears throat> regular election. I think they had something in 2020. Do you know they often that? have campaign schools. Yeah. Oh, but, yes, they do. Yeah. And that that's a really great in in the amount usually the status of women hold one. And the different political parties, they hold them. They're non, they're they're partisan, but anyone can can come yeah. because there's wonderful information and very encouraging information for people. And I think the Federation of Municipalities holds one. But uh, I sat on, I did a project with the uh, Women's Parliamentary um, Group on. Um, I have a whole resource for encouraging women, in particular, to to take part in, in politics and with vast resources. But the status of women website is, is good as well. And they have many resources. But okay. there's, there should be campaign schools popping up. Yeah, and and um, I think for the candidates or the potential candidates, that they're really effective mm -hmm. and useful to have. I'm thinking about some kind of a marketing program to stir the stumps of we could we could do a joint effort with the different municipal units here and have asked the status of women or some group to come in and and put on a, a program hmm. okay uh, i and also did a i held a, a a meeting at the legislature at one time and invited interested women to come and learn about politics just a very informal um we called it um uh, a, a team politics, and we it was it was really a good turnout, and uh, if people came. If people were asked to bring in a friend who who they thought may be a, a future um, political hack <laughs> sometime, and uh, we had really good in, uh, we had a lot of interest. So you know, there's lots of things we can do even here yeah. in the home bay to encourage people to to step up. Yeah, that people are Okay. Uh, Councilor Kerber, I don't look at it. I saw you begin to raise your hand. Let's go to the next item on the agenda, which is uh, acting CAO. Do you want to talk about the appointment of a development officer? Sure. So we uh, contract with the municipality of Chester for planning and development services. Um, our development officer is Heather Archibald, and Chester has just hired a part-time person to assist in that capacity. So staff are looking for a motion to appoint Elaine Brunshaw as a development officer. I can make that motion. Yes, please. Would you like me to read the whole thing? Or? It's entirely up to you. I'll um, move that council appoint Elaine Brunshaw as a development officer for the town of Mahone Bay, effective January 10th. 2023 and until such time as the appointment is revoked. Thank you, Councillor Carver. Seconded by Councillor Rose Croft. On the question, all in favor? Motion is carried. I, oh, Your Worship, I should have asked this question on, uh, under discussion. Um, does this mean that Elaine Burnshaw will be the development officer working on the Home Bay files? No longer first. Heather. No, they will both be. They it both will just be whoever is uh, whoever's available, I see. Yeah. Good. But there will be one person assigned to a file. Right. Okay. Uh, item 6.4 is the year-end report from area. Always an interesting read. As long as you can call somebody to get them to translate the, the techno <laughs> babble that goes into it. Uh, Anyone have any comments? Um, I this is really for the records, the history books, but I thought this was very interesting. And all of these things start with a, a great intro. But the first line here, 10 years ago, the town councils of Anaganish, Berwick, and Mahone Bay foresaw a future with significantly higher energy costs and tighter carbon constraints. And then it goes on from there about the fact that we are we have this resource because of the forethought of people that sat around in this room. Um, so I figure there are um, a couple of people at this table who were at that table then and uh, probably not as likely to toot their horns as they might be. But I think that is an incredible resource that we have because of forethought that happened in the home bay. Mm -hmm. So I wanted that to be in the permanent record. Thank you for that. 
And I think, of course, our, for actually the former mayor and the, yeah. the former CAO were both yeah. critical drivers yeah. of that project. And, and, Carl. From the, and the deputy mayor as well. That's right. And the deputy mayor at the time. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's been a lot of people involved. And the only thing I would suggest is it was, it was a good use of our time and our resources. And if we didn't have that, your light bills, your electric bills would be a lot higher than what they are now because you've been dealing with the full brunt of NSPI, right? And there's some great things that are gonna happen with it too. Okay, anything else on that? No? Uh, let's go to 6.5, the budget approval for region six. Unfortunately, <clears throat> Councillor Now is not with us tonight. But so uh, so your worship um, in front of council is a review of the activities of the past year. There's also a breakdown of the proposed budget. And Region 6 is really looking for, they have a draft motion in there to recommend approval of the 2023-24 Region 6 Intermunicipal Committee budget in the amount of $121,379. Um, our staff would recommend that we include, if council chose to make that motion, we include that the Mahone Bay portion is $1,399.24. So, really small piece of the pie, but that is our piece. Uh, again, our piece is what? $1,399.24. Out of the one twenty one three seventy nine. dollars That's correct. Good deal. Happy to make that, Mayor. Make that motion. Thank you, Councillor Feeney, seconded by Councillor Carver. Uh, on the question, all in favor? Motion's carried. Thank you. Let's go to Electric zero turn mower. Wires have been burning up all week on this. <laughs> they have seen. Uh, CAO or acting CAO, would you like to? So as you say, wires have been burning up. Um, a thousand emails have been launched in the meantime. <laughs> <laughs> uh, in front of council is a staff report. Uh, including a recommendation to uh, increase the budget allocation for the purchase of an electrically powered zero turn mower um, to $53,500 to demonstrate the town's commitment to the Mahone Bay Greenhouse Gas Production Action Plan. So in the existing budget, there is, um, I'm looking in the wrong place, um, We had uh, the existing budget has $15,000 allocated for a zero turn mower. Um, and a zero turn mower is one of the ones they're not going to have that little corner left over. So it stops them having to go back and it stops them having to go back with a whippersnapper and that sort of thing. Um, staff are currently in the process of ordering equipment so that it will be here in time for the spring. And when that came up, Staff did the research to find out what would it cost to make the switch instead of going gas powered mower to go to a uh, an electric powered mower. So that is a significant difference, of course. So that would um, require a fifty three thousand dollar five hundred dollar. Yes, that's the total, right? I'm getting tangled in the words with allocation, but, and again, a million emails have gone back and forth about costs. So um, yes, so it's looking at uh, increasing the allocation 53.5 from 1,500. 15,000. Yes, correct. Yeah, 15,000 to 50, so 53,000. 53, <clears> 000. 000. So uh, your worship, I'm prepared to put the motion on the table so that we can discuss it. Okay. So um, I'll move the council increase the budget allocation for the purchase of an electrically powered zero turn mower rather than the currently budgeted gas mower to $53,500 to demonstrate the town's commitment to the Mahone Bay Greenhouse Gas Reduction Action Plan. We have a second. 
I'll second the motion so we can have a okay. vote, have a vote on it. All right. On the um, question. <clears throat> so um, you know, I think the town's um bona fides on greenhouse gas uh reductions are certainly well known. I think we're known throughout the province and probably throughout Canada on a municipal government level for for punching well above our way. Um, but like a threefold increase to save $580 a year of expenses doesn't strike me as um, an appropriate use of the taxpayers' dollars to further this objective. Um, so it just doesn't strike me that the, the capital cost relative to the net savings on the environmental front mm -hmm. um, are, are robust enough to warrant an increase of the budget of $38,500. When I think about all of the other things that we could contemplate doing that would also further those objectives, I can't help but think there, there may be other ideas that we could target that would have a, a greater bang for a buck. Um, so uh, like, like I applaud the aspirational objectives of, uh, of the electric lawnmower, uh, $53,000 lawnmower is uh, I think a little expensive um, for our small small town, and I think we should kind of keep our powder dry and look for better opportunities to spend money uh, to achieve, you know, the overall uh, GHG uh, reduction yeah. benefits. Okay, thank you. Um, well, what he said, <laughs> um, I actually went and looked, and I I cannot find an electric lawnmower anywhere in North America that costs anything like fifty thousand dollars. But it occurred to me that this is probably a large piece of this is probably some fancy charging station, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera all the add-ons. It's a it's a right yeah. zero turn. Yeah. It's, a, it's articulated. It's it's articulated. It's got heated seats. It's got I'm just talking about the gas bar when I saw it today. <laughs> it has okay. everything. But my 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 goal will be a hard no. Uh, because I think there are lots of places we can spend thirty thousand dollars and get a lot better result. Okay, thank you. Well, I have to agree. It's a big expense for what we're mm -hmm. looking for. Councillor Carver, um, well, I'm torn, of course, um, because of the commitment to the, uh, the carbon reduction and. Um, I'm searching for the information that we received today earlier with uh, some of the comparisons. Um, I do have that email up if there is something in particular. You yeah. know. Do, do we have a carbon comparison? And there has to be a certain amount of carbon associated even with the electric power. There's it, so no, it's in the original. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I, you I think when, when we talk about Carbon, I think we have to put it in some perspective. This this is just plain and simple virtue of signaling. In the grand scheme of global global warming, this hasn't got any difference count. at all. It, yeah. it, it isn't even a rounding error. Uh, but it is 30, it is a sense the extra tax on the tax rate. And that is not a rounding error. Yeah. I mean, in the context of our deliberations around taking this building and moving us off of oil, I just, as as an aspirational objective, like I, it strikes me that that with this thirty eight thousand dollar, we will, I'm sure we we will have a a uh, greenhouse gas reduction agenda. We have staff that's working hard to find opportunities, and I'm glad they brought this forward. It just, it just it's just it's tough like the 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 expense savings relative to um the cost it's just it's just not there yet you know so i'm sure i certainly hope that staff keeps bringing the ideas forward and i'm sure we'll find a whole collection of of a portfolio of ideas in the fullness of time it just i think this one's a little bit of a bridge too far no, so yeah, so perhaps a bridge too far too soon, um, so that if we give it a bit more time, um, another seven years, if the target is 
It'll be um, a hydrogen powered model. <laughs> hydrogen powered, that's <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'd certainly appreciate and honor the um, the recognition of the the town's greenhouse uh, reduction plan, greenhouse gas reduction plan. Um, so, but I think that I, I agree that it is too soon uh, and that it, seven years down the road, we might have better financial conditions, better equipment to choose from. Yeah. Okay. We done? On the motion. All in favor? Opposed? Motions defeated. Thank you. Okay. Now let's go to da, 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 Brady appointments. Mm. I gave you a copy tonight of the, the last list of proposed uh, appointments. We have gotten some feedback on the appointments, in particular around the notion of alternates and alternates on internal committees is not something that we had done in the past, save a situation, a unique situation where it was requested by the committee and we made an alternate. So I just, it made sense. And we took the alternates out and we are left with what you see there. Try to spread them around. We have a new counselor. Don't want to give it all to her. <laughs> She's going to not be her. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we do have some, some experienced people. We've got a lot of investment from some people as well. Anyway, what is your wish, Council? Mayor, I just had one question. Um, just on the vernacular, the Joint Building Committee um, that the Deputy Mayor is shepherding, is that... What 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 do we mean when we say joint building? Is that the building inspection? That's that's the one that's operating shared services. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Is that is that committee? Is that vernacular used through all of the municipal units that are partnering on that? As far as I know, it is joint building committee. Yes. Not mm -hmm. building with marijuana, but the joint building correct. Committee. Right. And okay. that was one that the not uh, bricks and mortar, but deputy building. mayor had yeah. care of. Okay. I just, that's the first time I'd see, I had seen that phrase. Yeah. So, okay, that's what that is. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the Joint Transportation Committee, we do have an opportunity there for two people, but it, it hasn't <clears throat> met for a long time. I thought if it, if it becomes a vibrant committee, then we could look at appointing uh, a second person at that time. Anyway. Um, I, I wonder if uh, you were, I had asked you a question at what point about the South Shore Housing Action Coalition. And we haven't had a chance to speak with the Deputy Mayor. He's still, he's still away. Uh, he hasn't responded to it. Yeah. Um, so just for the others, my question had been that because uh, the deputy mayor, uh, data has been involved with SHAP, the Central Housing Action Coalition, for the past few years in his work in his work role as in his day job oh, yeah. from as public health. And so I was, I had asked the mayor if he's appointed by council to SHAP. Um, if he's going to Who's be going to view what he cared. Yeah, or if he's continuing as the representative, but as a, as a work assignment from uh, public health. Mm -hmm. So we still yeah. don't know that. So that is to be determined. Yeah. Why don't we defer that item? Yeah. Well, but we have to appoint Councillor Owens Croft as. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, we've got alternates in the external committees, not in the internal ones. Okay. All right. Move that uh, the, the council appointments, the proposed council appointments become the council appointments. 
2023 and 2024. We have a seconder. Councilor Wilson. I have a can I have ask on the question, please. Um, alternate means if that person cannot attend. If if the deputy mayor, if we take that the shack one, right? If he was not available to attend the meeting then you would attend in his place. Sure. Unless, of course, he is going to continue to be the representative for the government, in which case you get elevated to become it. Okay. Okay? Thank you. If I may comment on that, having been uh, on <clears throat> that, well done. that representative, yes, for quite a while. Um, so the, and for a while, I've actually been attending as um, um, alternate. Uh, so that, and that's when uh, uh, Councillor Burdick was the assigned person. So I just continued attending as as the alternate. Because, but you're not going to vote, but you're soaking up all the information, um, which is useful. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I it, mean, it, it's a choice, um, but it's useful to have that soaking up the information. Um, and being part of the discussion. <laughs> yeah, that is one of the busier groups, isn't it? The chef yeah, and, and there's a municipal um, small group. Yeah. The municipal reps have a small group, so I'm not going Okay. On the, that's the question. You heard the motion. All in favor? The motion is carried. Thank you. And we also have, this is one of the additions we had, uh, Deputy CAO, uh, the appointment um, of Mr. Hasten. That's correct. There is a recommendation from the nominating committee to appoint Mr. Hasten to the Climate and Environment Committee. That's your the nominating committee we struck yep. it. In. Okay. You heard the motion to appoint Mr. Hasten to the Environment uh, Committee. On the question, I'll second it. I'm sorry, Councillor Wilson will second it. I didn't the stimulator. <laughs> okay, all in favor? Motion is carried. Thank you. We're slowly getting our committees filled up, aren't we? Okay. Do, 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 do. Re Councillor Carver, request from the Brighter Days campaign. Yes, thank you, Your Worship. Um, in December, we had a, an excellent, interesting presentation um, from the Health Services Foundation's Brighter Days campaign, um, asking the town to make a contribution to the uh, to the campaign. Campaign, and um, we've since learned or confirmed that doing so would be contraindicated because of our grants to organization policy. So having um, under, with that understanding, I make a motion that council direct staff to write a letter thanking Paul Snow and Tim O'Regan from the Health Services Foundation's Brighter Days campaign for their presentation to council on December 13, 2022, and to advise them that the town of Mahone Bay is regrettably unable to make a contribution to the campaign due to provisions of the town's grants to organizations policy. Do we have a second? Councillor Wilson seconds. On the question. Can I ask this one? Um, I, I'm just wondering, is, is there another way that they can seek money? Can they go through the grant um, process? I, I don't think so. I looked at the policy today and it actually specifically says no contributions to hospitals or medical centers. And then not I thought, well, too. you know, it, yeah. this is really about equipping the new hospital, mm -hmm. not building the hospital, but even capital campaigns for equipments, it doesn't allow for. I think we can, we can um, direct the community to the fundraising campaign through the mayor's newsletter. Yeah. And we can certainly provide um, awareness of the campaign um, and point to it. Um, just that we can't, we just can't use taxpayers' dollars to 
make a contribution directly. And that was one of the reasons I think, if I remember the discussions, why we even created applications that we yeah. would not be using citizens' money. Yes, when, when they have an opportunity to to, fund it directly. to, 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 to provide it, right. to do it directly. Yeah. I, and I think that's a an appropriate policy that has served the community well historically. And, and if you think of where that that some of these things originally came from, there was a time, if you remember, where things got so far. Um, there were just so many requests that the town, for a period of time, had no grant had no grants uh, as as uh, as direction from council. Um, and then subsequent subsequently, we've we've I think we're up to maybe ten or eleven or twelve thousand dollars a year in grants, but um, those uh, those grants are very modest relative to well, this kind of a request for a hundred thousand mm, dollars. Fifty. Councilor Carver. Um, well, I, and I made the motion uh, definitely not with a, a singing heart uh, oh, yeah. because it's it's regrettable in a sense because our hearts are are there with the development um, and supporting it. So I fully uh, encourage the idea of the mayor's newsletter uh, and whatever other vehicle we can to support it, by encouraging people to donate. Um, and if citizens object to the fact that we're that. Uh, if we decide not to make a donation, um, that they can let us know and we could perhaps have another look at our policy, our grants policy. Would we have to change the grants policy in order to make a donation to? Is that the only way we can do it? I would think. Um, really, the intent behind, like not just the words, but the intent behind that wording in the policy was because we get very worthy requests from you know red cross and all kinds of uh, organizations that do very good work in the community such as this um but what it comes down to is when this council makes a decision to provide a grant they are spending taxpayer money that people did not have the choice whether or not to put that money in. Whereas something like the Brighter Days campaign or Red Cross or something like that, they are out there and people do have that opportunity to donate to the Red Cross or not if they choose. So the wording in the policy is does include um, a reference to um, a campaign where mm. people can uh, donate on their own. So yes, mm. I would say you would have to have a, a policy revision for that. So it could not be done by a motion, because a motion flies in the face of policy. It could be done sure. by a motion, yeah. but it would be contrary to policy. Yeah. But it wouldn't mm -hmm. be the first time, as you point out. That's correct. Mm -hmm. I, I'm like uh, Councillor Carter. I have struggled with this one. Me too. Um, you know, you look at the, uh, the number of gray heads in Mahone Bay, who will have need of those expanded hospital facilities and the 10 dialysis beds and whatever, whatever else. And I'd hate to think that it was our two page policy that kept something from not being realized <laughs> in the hospital and that somebody well, goes, goes without. I mean, it's fundamentally, it's taxation. We're we're ta yeah, we're using yeah. the we're using the property assessments to generate revenue, and then we're choosing to redirect that revenue to a non-municipal government mandate. Yeah. Um, so if people really are yeah. concerned about the hospital fundraising, like you say, they can donate themselves. Exactly. So I mean, so we. I mean, aspirationally, I mean, we could make a donation to, um, um, you know, a, a cure cancer or any a, any eligible charity, but we have a policy that precludes us from doing that, which is yeah. which is which I believe is appropriate. Yeah. Like we remember, remember, like we this isn't our money. Like we're actually going to the taxpayers, taking the money from them, and and I think. I think fundamentally that's a challenge. Just the other, the other issue is that is that 
taxpayers, if they make the contribution directly, they would benefit directly from the charitable donation receipts. Yeah. Versus really, you know, expropriation through the tax system for us to go in and say, like, we're going to essentially have a two cent levy, which is what this donation would be. And say we're because I don't think we would just fund it out of general grants. We would just say one time we're going to charge you an extra two cents on your income on your property tax to get the, the money to send to Bridgewater. I think there would be a, quite a bit of consternation behind doing that. But but at least the, if we did that, you would be able to pr- potentially provide the taxpayer with a, a, a receipt. Um, but I think legislatively, I just think the. I just don't know about the economic fairness of doing that either. I mean, you remember, it's true that we do have a, a, a demographics in the community that's skewing um, older, fair enough, but we also have we also have the highest level of low-income taxpayers in the town too, and we've had the most, the highest use of our low uh, low-income um, tax credit this year, or. To, so property tax um, <clears throat> credit. So it's it's a lot of money. It's as uh, you know, it's several cents of taxes, several yeah. cents of taxation. Yeah. So is, is it still around twenty three thousand per penny per cent? Twenty thousand dollars per cent, roughly. So it's two and a half cents. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Anything else on the motion on the question? Your motion will will provide for us to write back to the organizers, thank them for their information, but that our policies preclude uh, such a donation. Okay. Yeah. All in favor? Opposed? Motion is carried. Let's go to 8.1, the blue flag. Um, Arena designation. The Climate Environment Committee, actually, it's not just a little free play. Councillor Carver, um, you're the chair you. of the committee? Yes. Yes. Well, <clears throat> well, you will be. I am. No, I, I, you are. <laughs> I am because it's been appointed. It's been voted. Um, so the, in, in uh, December, the Climate and Environment Committee made a recommendation uh, to the council. Uh, that council fund a replacement of the pump out station at a cost of $12,000 at the Mahone Bay Civic Marina and work toward blue flag designation of the harbor. And that was the motion of the committee uh, and the recommendation appears in the minutes of that committee uh, in the agenda package today. Since that uh, recommendation was made, we've become aware that the key stakeholder regarding activities of the marina um, is the Wooden Boat Society. Um, And so with that in mind, and to support the intention or the intent of the committee's recommendation, I would like to make two motions, uh, one pertaining to the pump out station and the other regarding the blue flag program. Um, So, Uh, I make a motion that council direct staff to consult with the Wooden Boat Society regarding possible replacement of the pump out station at the marina and to report their findings and recommendations to council as soon as possible. Okay. Do we have a seconder? Councillor Feeney? On the question, I have one. Who's going to pay to replace the pump out system? That would be the, the, the discussion. This is just having a consultation. This is just a consultation. Okay. Any other questions? All in favor? Motions carry. Your second motion. And the second motion would be that council direct staff to consult with the Wooden Boat Society regarding the possibility of seeking blue flag designation for the marina and to report their findings and recommendations to council. Hmm. We have a seconder. I'll second that. Okay. Uh, okay. On the question. A second it with some concern in my voice because I know from history that that's a very difficult, convoluted, 
bureaucratic thing to try to achieve. And I, I think the consultation, but I think the consultation part of this will flesh that out. Mm -hmm. And if it's just beyond the pale, we can just say, forget about it. We, we had a similar proposal from a counselor 10, yeah. 12 years ago. Mm -hmm. And, and when we get into the meat of it, it was very protracted exercise to get the blue flag designation. And because of what we can't control in our harbor, such as boats that don't have holding tanks, and most of them don't, you can't meet the requirements that the blue flag organization is looking for in terms of pollution control. But that was 10 years ago. So let's see what it yeah. is today. That's even worse. Yeah. I, I, I think I feel a little more hopeful about it um, than that. But when I took a cursory glance, I didn't study it thoroughly. The, the steps, um, they seem to be very much in line with the things that the marina is, are already happening at the marina. Um, and a, a lot, large part of the activity would be education and other things would be um, adjustments around um, being sure that uh, the showers, for example, weren't, it weren't running for hours on end, that kind of thing. Um, <clears throat> So I, I, I felt hopeful about the possibilities um, mm. and the, the piece of, I did circulate a piece of information that, that had the, the steps. So yeah. if people mm -hmm. wanted to have a look at that, uh, see, but it'll be interesting to see what the staff come back with. See how much it's, it's yeah. developed over yeah. the years. Okay. Yeah. So on the question, all in favor, the motion's carried. Thank you. Well, that could thank you, Councillor Kerber. That committee is already off to the races. They are in. You know, you think about a, a relatively new committee. This is mm -hmm. doing exactly what we had hoped. Yeah. yeah. So the people around the table are just really keen and mm -hmm. really deep into the issue. So it's, it's interesting. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. We have the minutes of the Heritage Advisory Committee. I'm not seeing any motions in them. Mm -hmm. Any comments on the minutes? No, Mr. other than we did have uh, we did have a brief discussion about the fact that this is the this year twenty twenty three is going to be the hundredth anniversary of the placement of the cenotaph, mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. we are going to try to seek opportunities to uh, showcase that later in the year, and obviously in November. Okay. And to add to that, when I saw the program that the the uh, museum is published on Remembrance Day. My grandfather was the town councillor who represented the town <laughs> ah, <laughs> I like it. in the design and the creation. So he celebrated in his new location. <laughs> and that's right. Yeah. <laughs> Over somebody's dead body. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Just, just for like the sake of record keeping, we also have one, two, three, four, five, six sets of the uh, Social Regional Library 2022 minutes. We just <laughs> opened us all forward and there they were. Your Worship, uh, we have on staff level, we've been, we haven't been getting the minutes like we used to regularly. And uh, in follow up from the last council meeting to find the address to um, send that letter to the board, lo and behold. Magic. Uh, it will so show it up. Back. Uh, Mayor moved that we were, that we accept the uh, minutes of mm -hmm. the uh, Social Regional Library for calendar year 2022. A through F. Seconded. Okay. On the question, all in favor? Motions carried. The minutes have been accepted. Uh, no new business. So we will um, we'll now are going to go into an in camera session. But before we do that, Councilor Herbert. Policy and strategy. That's oh, correct. yeah. Look at that. Yeah. 8.4. Yeah. Minutes of the Policy and Strategy Committee, November 28th. Uh, so, uh, Your Worship, there's only one recommendation from those committee minutes. Uh -huh. And that is to uh, set the agenda for the January meeting to include the committee, sorry, the council policy and placement of kindness meters. So moved. That's good. Okay. Um, I'll second that. 
All right. Kindness meters, right? Kindness no, meters and council. Council policy. Council policy. Council policy. Yeah. Fair enough. Okay. Um, you've heard the motion on the question. All in favor? Motion is carried. That's a 29th. Yes, no. Kindness meters. It is the Monday. 23rd. 23rd, oh, earlier. Okay. Okay. 23rd, fair enough. Okay. Ashley, Jerry. Um, so, yes, with that, your worship, the next agenda item would be to go to closed session. Yeah. Then. So, let's, uh, let's uh, do how many people do we have online? Uh, we have 13. 13. Does anyone have any questions? We do have a question. Um, I have noticed a change in the format of the Solar Garden update starting with the November monthly update. And this month is the year-end report. The previous reports commented on whether the project was still within budget, including con contingency. Is the Solar Garden still within the $5,805,686 budget, including 25% overspend contingency? Uh, if I may, that is a separate report. Um, we get the solar garden report once a month, and this is the one-time annual report from area. So those are two separate things. Um, I can't um, speak to the exact numbers of the solar garden project right now off the top of my head, but um, we can definitely look back to that last report from, did we have one in the yeah, December in the meeting? Month, yeah. yeah. So. Um, yeah, that last one will be the most up to date. And any of the solar garden reports we get go on the website. There's a special page to go to the solar garden project. Okay. So there is uh, another question and comment about passing motions after um, in camera. Um, the when town council leaves closed session, the camera is not turned back on. Um, can council either one, turn the camera on after closed session for any voting or two, please only conduct roll call votes when the camera is off for more transparency. Roll call, fair enough. Yeah, roll call um, votes sounds reasonable. I mean, that's a, a roll call vote is a legislative decision yeah. at each time. Um, I would be... I would caution council about making a blanket statement that they would do that for every vote. I know at a staff level, we're trying to figure out how can we get back online again Afterwards. after, yeah, yeah, I think that's the missing piece. The other thing is too, that the um, the minutes do appear rather quickly within a couple of days now on the website. So the, and the decision would be in the written minutes. That's correct. Councilor Kerr. Um, but typically it's up to any councillor around the table to call for um, a roll call vote. So any one of us could do that at any vote that takes place after mm -hmm. uh, an in camera session. Now let's try it on tonight and see what happens. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that if recorded is, vote that was called for. It would be part of the minutes as well. That's correct. Okay. If, if merit, if there's a motion. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, there's a motion. Yeah, yeah. There's a motion. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Any other questions? Um, uh, again, is the solar garden project within budget? Mm, okay. I just don't have that number in front of me right now. I have no reason to believe we're in any yeah. budgetary issues. Yeah. But I mean, the, the council benefited from a tour of the solar garden facility in that's early true. December, that's right. that's I believe true. in early December, and um, there's certainly nothing brought to our attention at that point that, 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 um, that led yeah. us to, to, I mean, I don't think council, council does not have any information that would lead us to believe there's, we're over budget. No. No, a, are, as of the December. I think you'd be shocked around this yeah. table as well if we yeah. are over budget. There was no suggestion of that. As of that meeting. In the last report. That was the 10th, 8th, 10th or 11th of uh, December. Yeah, we we that the tour. Was, the tour, tour yeah. was the 16th. Mm -hmm. 16th. Yeah. I was with you. You were at the I Christmas was... party, staff Christmas party on the 16th, too, go. so we know. Not really. Uh, <laughs> I was with you. Any others, Kelly? <laughs> Ms. Rudin? No? Okay. Well, thank you to the people at home who have joined us. Uh, we appreciate you taking the time. 
And uh, if you have any questions going forward or comments you'd like to make, there's six counselors and myself sitting around the table. Don't hesitate to give one of us a call and uh, would be happy to discuss it with you. Oh, may I, Your Worship? You may. Uh, there was a question again, I feel badly about not having a, a number. Um, I think Councillor Feeney, you were doing the same thing to say we have, we definitely believe that it's within budget. Um, the issue with a question like that is if we don't have the numbers right in front of us, it's hard to give a fulsome answer. So people are always yeah. invited to send an email to clerk at townofbahombay.ca and staff can follow up with you directly. Um, it's just really a matter of what fits in our brains when we sit down at the council table in an evening. That's all. Thank you for Thank you. Uh, Acting CAO or CAO. Well, with that, um, we'll say good night to the people at home and uh, we would entertain a motion to go in camera and we'll take a five minute break. So move. I um, move that we uh, go into closed session to discuss legal advice eligible for solicitor client privilege and yep. contract negotiations as committed under the MGA. Thank you. We have a seconder? Seconded. All in favor? Boom.